All right, so in this project, we're gonna create a to-do list, which looks pretty nice. It's a pretty nice, clean design. And we're able to add a to-do down here. I'll just say to-do one, and you'll see that gets added. I'll say to-do two, to-do three, and it's just gonna get keep getting added down here. Now, if I reload this, they're gonna stay because we're actually gonna implement local storage at the end. So first we're gonna create the design or the, the layout here, then we're going to add the functionality in the DOM where we can add it to do. We can also mark as completed. So if I left click, it's gonna mark it as complete. And then if I right click, it'll actually delete the to do. So we'll add the DOM functionality first and then and in the last video, we'll go ahead and implement local storage so that you can leave the page or reload the page and the to-dos will stay. Okay, so we're gonna start on our to-do list. So I'm gonna jump into the HTML here and let's change the title to to-do list. And for the body, we're not gonna have much. Basically, we're gonna just have, let's do an H1, we'll say to-dos and a form, which I'm gonna give the ID of form and let's see we don't need an action and then in this form we're just going to have one input so let's do an input with the class of input and also an id of input it's going to be a text and then i'm going to set the placeholder and we'll say enter your to do and i'm also going to set autocomplete to off okay under that input we're going to have a ul and give that a class of to do's and an id of to do's now this all the list items will get put in here when we add our to do's so it'll be dynamic you know we'll add a to do in the input and then it'll get shown as a list item but for now i'm just going to put uh, a sample list item we'll just say my first to do let's put two actually Okay, so that's our HTML. Let's jump into our style sheet. And we're going to be using the Poppins font. Oops, Poppins. And then we want to set the weight here to 200, 400. And for the body, let's set a background color. Background color, we're going to do F5 three times, which is a light gray. And then the color. We'll do 444, which makes it a little lighter. And we want to display flex, align items. Now flex direction, yeah, we'll keep flex direction as column. The rest of this, yeah, the rest of this should be fine. Actually, let's take off overflow hidden, just in case we need scroll bars. Okay, and then the H1, I'm gonna make it look really nice so let's style that so the color we're going to use rgb and it's going to be 179 for red 131 for green and 226 for blue we're going to make it really big so let's do font size set that to 10 rem it's going to be nice and big and we're going to make sure we text align center and i want it to be faded or, or, or transparent so we're going to set the opacity to 0 0.4 all right so that's our h1 now the form form i'm going to set a box shadow and for the offsets we'll do 0 and 4 10 pixels for the blur rgba for the color which is going to be black and then 0 0.1 Let's give it a max width of 100% and let's give it a width of 400 pixels. All right, so that's the form itself. Now the input, let's do that next. So we gave, a, a, gave it a class of input and I'm gonna just say border none. And the color for that is gonna be 444. The font size is gonna be two rem. Okay, so nice and big. And let's add some padding to the input. We'll do one rem top and bottom, two rem left and right. And let's set, let's make it display as a block level element and set the width of it to 100% of its container. 
Okay, so that already looks pretty good. Um, placeholder, let's change the color of that. We'll say input colon colon placeholder. And then color is going to be hexadecimal value D5 three times. So it's nice and light placeholder. And then let's do the list item. So these right here, though, those don't look very good. So let's say input list item, uh, not input list item to do's list item. <laughs> so let's do the to do's first. I'm going to set a background color on these of white. All right. And then let's set the padding on the to do's to zero. And we want to get rid of those bullet points. So list style type, we're going to set that to none. And let's take off any margin as well. Okay, and then that should be good for to do's. Now for the LIs, say to do's LI, I'm going to set a border on the top for one pixel solid and E5 three times. Okay, so we get a border top. Let's give the cursor a pointer when we hover over them because we're going to be able to right click and um, delete them and also mark them as complete as well. So the font size, let's make that bigger. Font size will do 1.5 rem. And let's add some padding. We'll do one rem. Oops, one rem and two rem on the sides. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, now that when they're completed, when they're completed, we're going to want a line through. So let me just add manually a class here of completed. And now here we'll say to do's li if it's completed. Then we're going to set the color to B6 three times. And let's also give it a line through. So text decoration will be set to line through. Okay, so if it's completed, it will look like that. Now, one thing I just realized is I forgot to put the little text at the bottom that says, you know, left click to toggle complete and then right click to delete. So we're going to go under the form here. And let's add in some small tags and we'll say, say left click to toggle completed. And then I want to just have a, a line break. So we'll put a BR tag here and then say right click to delete to do. All right, so that doesn't look very good. So we're just going to add a little bit of styling to the small. Okay, so small, let's change the color, we'll make it uh, lighter. So I'm going to give it a value of B5 three times. And let's move it down. So margin top, I'm going to set to three rem to push it down. And let's just text align center. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. So now we have the UI here. Let's actually make the outline of this the same color as the H1 though. So I'm going to grab that right here and then let's take the input so we'll say uh, input colon focus so when it's in its focus state we want the outline color to be that purple all right cool so in the next video we're going to make this function we'll be able to add um, to do's and they'll get saved to local storage. We'll be able to delete them and make them complete. So I'm just going, I'm going to get rid of the two list items that are in here now because that was just to, to see it and style it. So ultimately that's going to start with nothing. So that's it. Let's go ahead and jump into the JavaScript in the next video. All right, so we're going to start on our JavaScript. Now we're going to add the just the, the DOM functionality for now so we can add it to do and enter and it'll get added here. We'll be able to mark it as complete and remove it, but we'll do the local storage stuff in the in the video after this one. 
So let's go ahead and first bring in what we need. So we want our form document dot get element by D form has an ID of form. And then we also want our input so we can get the value. And that has an ID of input. And we also want the to do's UL. So we'll say to do's UL and that has an ID of to do's. All right. Now on the form, we're going to add an event listener. We want to listen for a submit of the form. When that happens, we'll have a function takes in a, a event object as an argument. And then we can take that event object and call prevent default to prevent the form from having its default behavior. Then we're going to call a, a function called add to do. Oops. All right. So for this function, say add to do, and it's going to have the option to take in a to do. And what we'll do is initialize a variable called to do text and set that to whatever the input dot value is. Now, if a to do is passed in here, then we want to set to do text to to do and then dot text. Okay, if if it's passed in initially, if we're just submitting a to do here, it's not going to get passed in. So it'll be whatever the value is. All right. In fact, we can just console log and see to do text is just type something in, hit enter, and you can see it's getting logged. All right. Now, next thing is to construct uh, a list item. So we just want to make sure that to do text exists. So if to do text, then let's create a to do element and we'll set this to document dot create element and we're going to create a list item. And then we want to check to see, let's say if to do and to do dot completed then we're going to add the class of completed. So to do element dot class list dot add and we're going to add the class of completed. All right. Outside of that, let's take the to do element and let's set the inner text. So the list item inner text is going to get set to whatever to do text is. All right. So I'll save that. Now, if I do this, nothing is going to happen just yet. Um, let's go ahead and add that to the DOM. So we'll take the to do's UL. So to do's UL and we want to append a child element. And what we want to append is the to do element, which is the list item. And then I just want to clear the form. So we'll take the input and we'll set the value equal to nothing. So now if I say to do one enter to do to enter. Those are going to get added. Now, nothing happens if I click or right click or or anything. Uh, if I reload, they're going to go away. So the, the keeping them there in local storage, we'll do that in the next video. But I do want to be able to at least uh, delete them and and also mark them as completed. So let's go right above where we added it to the DOM and let's take the specific to do element and add an event listener to it. So let's say add event listener and we want to listen for a click. And when that happens, we'll have a function and it's just one line. So we don't need curly braces. We'll just take the to do element and we want to take the class list and call actually not add. We want to toggle because we want to be able to toggle completed. So toggle the class of completed. All right. So now if I save that, this is it's, they're going to go away when I save just because this, the page reloads. But let's just say to do one. And now if I click on it, you can see that the class of completed is applied. If I click again, it's taken away. So it's going to toggle that class. All right. Now to remove, we want to do a right click. So I'm going to add another event listener. I'm going to just grab this. And instead of click, we're going to listen for context menu. So that's going to be a, a right click. So when that happens,
we want to prevent the default behavior. So I'm gonna, let's see, we want this to be, to go to some curly braces like that. And we wanna also pass in, because right now if you right click, it's gonna bring that up. We don't want that. We wanna prevent that from happening. So let's e dot prevent default. So if I were to put something in here and now I'm right clicking, I'm not seeing the, you know, the default, the native context menu. Um, what I want to do, though, is take that to do element and remove it completely from the DOM. So we just call remove. So now if I put something in here and I right click, that goes away, that goes away, that goes away. Okay, so that's pretty much it as far as the functionality for the DOM. So in the next video, we're going to apply local storage so that every time we reload or come back to the page, they're not gone. Okay, so now we want to basically save our to do's to local storage. And with local storage, we have a, a, a browser API that we can use to say local storage and we can set item using set item. We give it a key such as name and a value such as Brad. So that's how we can set an item. Now, you, you, when you save something in local storage, it's going to be saved as a string. If you have an array or an object or, or something like that, you can save it, but you have to first wrap it in json.stringify, which will do just that. It'll string stringify your object or array, whatever it is. And then when you pull it out from local storage, so to get something, we say local storage dot get item. And let's say it's like an object, but it's stringified. So when you take it out, you want to wrap it in json.parse. Okay, so you want to remember those two for objects and arrays and stuff, stringify and parse. Okay, and to remove items, you can do local storage dot remove items. So it's a pretty easy API to work with. Now we're going to go ahead and let's start with checking our local storage first, because obviously if there are items in local storage, we want them to load here. So up at the top, Let's say const to do's set that to uh, local storage dot get item and we're going to call it to do's. Now, as I said, it's going to be stored as a string. We want to parse this back into an array. So let's say JSON dot parse. OK, so that will, those will be put into do's and then we want to say if there are to do's in local storage, then Let's go ahead and loop through each one. So to do's dot for each and say for each to do, we want to add to do and pass in the to do. OK, else if there's not, well, I mean, I guess we don't need an else because if there are to do's, it'll do this. If not, it won't. So if I save that, you'll see it's not doing anything. And if I open up my my uh, dev tools here and I go to application, you can see what you have in local storage right here. So we I actually have my empty notes array or stringified array from another app in this course. Uh, we can clear local storage if we want. I know you can't really see this. So if I click that, um, that gets rid of it. This will clear all. So there's nothing in local storage right now. So it's not it's obviously not going to show any to do's. Now, when we add a to do, let's see, let's go down to the bottom here. And at the very end, we're going to have a function called update LS. So we're going to update our local storage. And basically, we're we're just going to have one function that's going to take all of the to do's in the list item in the list items and put them into local storage and then we can call update local storage when we add them also when we mark it as complete or when we remove them so it's kind of a function that will run in in multiple places instead of just having an add to do and then a remove to do and then doing our local storage in separate functions so let's say update ls and like i said we're going to take all the list items so to do's let's say to do's element plural and set that to document and then we'll use query selector all because we're selecting all of the list items which will put that into a node list which is similar to an array i'm also going to initialize a to do's array and what i want to do 
no pun intended, is take the to do's element, which is all our elements, which are all the list items, and I want to loop through those. So for each to do element, so for each one of these, I want to take that to do's array that I just initialized and I want to push on to it. And what I want to push is an object that has a text value. So text for the key and then to do element. So the current to do inner text, whatever's in the inner text is going to get put in there. We also want to know if it's completed. So we'll have a completed property here with to do element. Make sure it's singular. It's it's this specific to do in the loop. We want to see if the class contains so class list dot contains and we want to see if it contains com the class of completed if it does then this is going to be true if it doesn't then it will be false all right so now that we have this to do's pushing on everything that's in the list item let's update local storage so after this for each which ends right here let's take local storage and say set item and we want to set this as to do's and it's going to be the to do's array. However, that's uh, that's going to be an array. So we need to wrap that in JSON dot stringify first. So we want to wrap to do's in that and then store it in local storage. All right. So now if I save and I go here and I say to do one enter, you can see that it gets added down here in local storage. The value, it looks like an array, but or an array of objects, but it's actually a string. It's stringified. But when we pull it out up here, we parse it back into an array and then we go ahead and we loop through and we show it here. So now if I reload to do one is still there. Now, if I mark it as complete, it works in the DOM, but if I reload, it's not marked as complete because we did not update local storage when we marked it as complete. So let's do that. Let's go down to uh, let's see. So right here we toggle the class of complete. We actually want to change this to be a code block. So we want our curly braces because it's going to be more than one line. All right. So after we mark it as complete, let's call update local storage. We want to do the same thing when we remove. So right after remove, we want to call update local storage. So now if I were to let's add another one, we'll say to do two. And if I go ahead and mark that as complete, that should change in here. And you can see right here to do one complete is false. If I click that it changes it to true. And now if I reload, it's still there because it's again, it's fetching from local storage. If I remove, so if I right click here and reload, you can see it's still gone. Right click again. That updates local storage as well. So we have this one function that takes care. We can just put it anywhere we want to update the local storage at any time based on the list items and based on if they're you know completed or not. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. I think it's a, it's, it's a, a decent amount of functionality for such a small amount of code. And I'd encourage you to create a, a different type of app, maybe a workout tracker or something like that with, you know, more fields and a different design and maybe add some other functionality like update so you can update the uh, resource as well. All right. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next video.